Hey everyone, if you haven't been to this channel before, my name is Ryan Rice. On this episode, we are gonna go over the one year, 30,000 mile review of my 2021 F-150. So if you haven't been to my channel before or have watched my 2023 update video, you know, a lot of people are saying, why are you putting this review on a bass fishing channel? And the reason is why is because your truck and all your equipment that you use for fishing is a part of your life. And at the same time, I want this channel to be more than just kayak bass fishing. Yes, that's my primary goal. But, you know, after a while, it gets boring watching me fishing all the time, watching bait reviews. I think it's nice to throw in on your channels, you know, truck reviews, because that's how we get our, you know, our, our boats and our, our kayaks and our equipment to the water. And it's also nice uh, also doing reviews on like trailers. Any equipment that involves, you know, us getting to the water is 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 our equipment you know it's just not just the the rods and the reels it's the trucks it's the trailers it's the racks it's it's the lighting it's it's everything you know is how we get our stuff and our equipment to the water so i want to make this a um, a, a review of just a truck and you know where we're at at thirty thousand miles any problems any pros and cons of this truck um like i said before in my update video i've had 15 trucks in 22 years so i've had a lot of vehicles in 22 years and uh they've all been trucks i've had one car and that was short-lived but uh that's when i was a teenager and just wanted something you know reliable new and, and have air conditioning to get around but uh you know i've been through a lot of trucks so i have my experience on every u.s market main four brands that we have here you know your gm products your uh, your Ram, I never had a Dodge, but you know the Ram products, which is Dodge, which then changed the Ram, and and Ford, you know. So I've had the Chevys. I never had a GMC, but still part of the GM family. Uh, so I just kind of want to go over the review on this video. I will be doing a separate video. I'm going to go over the equipment that's been on this truck so far that I've had in the years. I've actually changed it up a few times, but I'm going to do a separate video on the the little bit of accessories I have on this truck to help me for kayak bass fishing but you know like i said i want to make this channel you know more about everything in general just not fishing all the time because to me you know i get bored with watching the same stuff over and over again and i'm sure you guys do too so i just kind of want to just break this channel up you know if you haven't been to this video uh, channel before you know and you're just catching this video because of the truck review you know and you, and you go and you uh you know researched uh, f-150s if you like fishing you know do me a favor please subscribe to this channel i usually don't ask that much uh for people to subscribe but i'm trying to build this channel and trying to get it bigger so i can do more the people who follow me understand what i'm trying to do uh long term with this channel so if you if you wouldn't mind just subscribe to this channel uh i would appreciate it you know comment and give me that thumbs up and let's get into the review of this truck so i am shooting this video inside just for the simple fact that it's cold out and it is windy but i want to show you the initial window sticker of this truck so you know exactly what i had sorry it's a little beat up but if you see here it's a 2021 f-350 four by four super crew the 145 inch wheelbase the 3.5 eco boost as far as the eco boost i'll go into a little bit of detail uh, a little bit later it has the 10 speed and the exterior color is a velocity blue metallic you can see i'm going to go over all the other stuff but you can see the actual price the mrsp on this truck but at the same time you can also see the market adjustment now this is from somerville ford in south carolina you can see they actually had a market adjustment on this and uh some other accessories that's where they make their money off and you can see the final sticker on this truck was sixty one thousand and eighty dollars i did not pay this i refused to pay this i dealt with this dealer i bought in four vehicles from this dealer or three vehicles from this dealer in one year uh, it's between me and my wife so i said to them i'm not paying this market adjustment uh i says i will pay for the uh the bed liner and the window tent that's all i paid for they had no wheel liners in here i told them not to put them in and the clear edge door guards i told them i'm not paying for that stuff it says they want me to come back there uh i'm not paying this market adjustment so i think my overall sticker on this was a little over i think i paid like 55 390 for this truck that's a lot of money you know that's that's what it is right now with these MRSPs. Uh, 
you know it's gonna get better that's why i'm waiting but i'm gonna go into that a little bit later on my other video i think when i go over the options that i put on this truck for fishing hit that video next uh, when it comes out so you know this has the 302a package which is the bigger package on this this is a sport uh truck uh you know model of it it's the sport edition i took that sticker off i'm gonna go over that a little bit in a little bit but it has the 302a package which has the uh the 12 inch screen that has the 360 cameras on this it has all the led bed lighting that's very important to me the 360 lighting you know on the um, side things that's actually nice too i kind of like that feature but Real quick, so you know that this truck was on the lot. This is not how I would have ordered it. I'm a big fan of the color, the Velocity Blue. It's nice, it's, it stands out, and I've gotten a lot of comments on it, but it's not my personal preference of color. The reason why I took this truck really was for the, uh, was really for the engine, and also had the brake controller, and another big thing this thing had, that they actually charge you for that they don't put in. So they charge you $50 for the auto start stop removal. They actually charge you for something that you do not uh, actually put in the truck, which I think is crazy. But at the same time, it's a very nice option because I can't handle the start stop. You know, that's why I'm used to the three quarter ton trucks. There's no start stop on that. And I like that. But, you know, it had that. So that was, believe it or not, that little little uh, item right there, the auto start stop removal, was one of the biggest reasons why I actually picked this truck over the other ones that were on the lot at the time when I traded in my F-250. But my F-250 previous to this was a 2020 F-250 and it had the 6.2 gas with the 6-speed transmission. That st that Those two items have been out for the longest time. So I thought it was gonna be bulletproof. Well, I was having problems with the transmission, believe it or not. So it made me get rid of that vehicle. That's why I jumped back into a half ton. But it has that auto start stop removal. There is options that you can do, you know, aftermarket reprogramming, plugging into your, uh, you know, your trailer towing ports for lights. You can plug in like those additional like strip lights that go underneath there. If it has any of that stuff in there, it thinks you're towing. So the auto start automatically gets turned off. But you know, I didn't want to have to do all that stuff. So that's why I like that option of the auto start removal. And I actually see that quite a bit on some F-150s on the lots. Uh, it also had the extended fuel range, uh, the 36 gallon tank. It has the XLT Sport Appearance package, which gives you the uh, body colored bumpers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the bumper front and back, it's the same color as the vehicle. I like that look, but at the same time, you get a lot of chips in your painted bumper over having the chrome. The chrome kind of hides the, the rock chips. You know, when you have a colored bumper in the front, you get all the little chips, et cetera, on that, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, had the, uh, you know, the different rims on this, the 18 inch spoke gloss black wheels. It was a, it's a nice look, you know, it has a lot of options that make it nice, but at the same time, it, I don't need them and I really don't care for them, believe it or not. But let's go on the inside real quick. I will show you my spin, uh, odometer and just show you a little bit of the inside. So I'm shooting this video inside just because it's windy outside. Uh, so I, but I did open the bay door to get a little bit more light, but you can see my odometer has 30,346.4 miles. Uh, this is your in interior. Let's give it a quick start up. I want to kind of go show you the inside of this and all the options, etc. That it came in this 302A package. You see it had the larger screen here and what the inside looks like here. Let's get some more light in here if we can. But you know, it has like that motorized shifter, which I can show you here. It folds down out of the way. It's great if you have the work surface, but I don't have the work surface in this truck, but it still gives you a flat area to lay like a sit. I can sit like a laptop right here and kind of type, which is nice. Do I need this? No, I think it's something, I think I've used it once. You know, it's a, this is something little gadgets that I really don't care about, uh, but that's just my personal preference. A lot of people like all this stuff. Uh, you know, it's got automatic climate control. So you can, you know, change it up to individually each side, but it's got that, which, you know, really kind of keep it the same all the way across. It's got the drive modes. So as you go through, you can see you got normal, you got tow haul, which I use a lot. You got eco. I actually, when I first bought this truck, I actually used the eco mode quite a bit. It does make a difference. It definitely does. It just changes, you know, when you hit that gas, uh, when you hit the throttle, it just doesn't like, you know, dive right into it. It's a very slow, gradual, if you need that response to get moving in eco mode, just really just not hammer down, but just really push on that throttle and you'll get the response out of the eco boost itself. Uh, let me see, you got eco mode. I haven't really used it a lot lately. You got sport mode. I've been in this a few times. It is a lot, this truck has a lot of power and you know, it's not even to the wheels. It's 400 
horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque you know this 2021 model year which i've never really have ever gotten a, a first gen i guess you could say of the new models this is my first time you know it's a 2021 it's right it was right in the middle of or towards the end or right in the middle still when COVID was crazy we still have that issue now today with uh, the labor force and the quality but you know i bought this because of this engine too because i do tow heavy and i don't overload this truck this truck is rated for let's go let's finish the tow modes if you guys haven't been to this channel before you know i can get off subject very easily uh let's go so we got slippery we got deep sand snow uh, i've never used the slippery and i never used the deep sand snow mode and you got mud and ruts so it has you can see it automatically puts you in takes removes the traction control and automatically turns on the four-wheel drive uh going into that deep ruts i've never had to use this ever the modes i've always used is normal tow haul and that's the two modes i uh, i primarily use in this vehicle you can see i got a little i'm between full and half uh sorry between full and three quarters and i got 604 estimated to uh empty now the most i've had on this truck filling this truck up it has the 36 gallon tank I try to drive it pretty easily, but uh, the most I've gotten out of a tank of gas is 800 miles, and that's when I've taken it. It's been it was you know long highway trips, so you will get the range. Now the uh, miles per gallon on the life of this vehicle that's between towing and uh, my normal highway city driving, I'm averaging 21.2 miles per gallon. Now that's based on the computer. I have hand calculated this and it's only been off by a tenth, two tenths in either direction. And this is driving in normal mode. This engine, if you drive it normal and not always hammering down, you can see what you'll get. And I've towed 11,280 pounds of this truck five times. And that's uh, towing a Mini X with an equipment trailer and I've towed with this truck in this past year, four other trips with um, 6,000 pounds at a five hour trip to North Carolina. And I've done that four or five times in one year. And I normally tow once a week, I will say on average, probably anywhere from three to 5,000 pounds. I tow weekly one time a day probably round trip of about 40 miles. So I use this truck to tow. I don't tow with it every day. Still on average though, even when I'm towing, over the life of this vehicle with 30,346 miles, I'm averaging 21.2. That's lifetime. Now my trip I've reset in recently, you can see it's 21.7. So that's me resetting recently. Uh, you can see it was at 1,438 miles uh, as I'm pressing buttons here. I guess it has that lane keeping access. You can keep that too. I'm not a big fan of all these uh, these options just because electronic. I've had no electrical demons in this vehicle, but whatever. But you can see a trip of 1,438 miles, I'm averaging 21.7. So probably in reality, that's probably about 21.4 to 21.5. Now, if you hammer down on this vehicle all the time, you will probably average maybe 18, 19, which is still pretty good having this 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 amount of power in my opinion. But I'm not buying a vehicle, I'm not buying a pickup for fuel economy. You can get it out of this. I think 21 is great for a gasoline engine. You know, uh, you have the new uh, Chevy's the only one, you know, Chevy GM's the only one that's keeping a half ton diesel and the new LM0, right? L, or LZ0 engine is getting really great fuel economy and really great reviews already. If you have, like I said, if you haven't been to this channel before, I know trucks probably better than fishing. I've been through them all. I do a lot of research. I personally owned a lot of these vehicles. So I can tell you firsthand what is true and what is BS. But you can see I'm, I'm happy with the fuel economy. Now my you know, F-250, I would average about 13, 14. I'm even happy with that with a gasoline engine, but that's a whole nother episode. But you can see it's got, doesn't have the auto fold in, auto fold in mirrors or any of the manual fold in mirrors, but you got your, just your standard features here. Uh, you get, like I said, you got the bigger screen. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. You got your, you know, your car play, you got navigation, you got your zone lighting. That's what it's called, zone lighting. That was another reason why I picked this vehicle because the zone lighting is important for me 
but I always add additional LEDs anyway to all my vehicles. But it was a nice option. I did like that option. That's another reason why I picked this vehicle. So you got the auto start, stop removal, and you got the zone lighting. I like that. You know, you got your apps, you got your features. I'm not going into this stuff. There's a whole bunch of videos on this. You can see here, it's got the uh, pro trailer uh, backup stuff. I'll never use it. I've been driving, I've been towing trailers my whole life. I don't need a knob to turn the wheel for me. It freaks me out anyway. Uh, but you know, it's a great feature for people who barely tow or only tow a camper once a year and they just get frustrated towing. It's a cool option. I just think once again, it's just something else to break. You know, I grew up with a, you know, a truck with a radio, manual crank windows, and a stick on the floor. I'll take that any day of the week. You can call me old school. But, you know, this stuff here, it's a lot of cool features. It probably makes the trip nicer. I don't want it. So that's why next vehicle around, which we'll go into another video, you know, video about that later. The next video around, you know, the next vehicle around, I'm going to try to eliminate. They all come with screens now, but they, they don't come with all this stuff. I'm going to try to eliminate as much of this as I possibly can. Have I had a problem with any of this stuff? Absolutely not. Everything has been working flawlessly. You know, there's videos out there that smash, you know, or maybe knock this or people have, a, you know, a lot of videos you see on YouTube have a problem with electronics, have a problem with the engines, have problems with transmissions. And I'm actually shocked so far. I'm going to knock on some kind of wood. I guess I'll knock on my head that at 30,000 miles with all this stuff in this vehicle, I have had no issues at all with the engine transmission. There's only one thing with the transmission and I think it's normal. Now, if you guys don't know, GM uh, and Ford kind of got together on this 10 speed transmission but for some reason because gm uses a different fluid and a different program their 10 speeds a lot smoother this 10 speed in this ford is really smooth but on your downshift every now and then and it's normal because other people have that i know have this vehicle when it downshifts into third gear sometimes it's kind of rough but it's nothing that's been bugging me or bothering me. Every now and then you'll get a, you know, even come out of the overdrive that's from 10th to 9th, every now and then you'll get a little bit of a hard, like, you know, engaging into that gear. The third speed on this though is, it happens quite a bit, but it's not like, oh my God, you know, there's something wrong with my truck. Uh, when it gets into third gear, coming to a stop, stop light or a stop sign, getting into third gear, sometimes it does have a little bit of a harder engagement into that gear. It's not like jerky. It's not like, you know, oh my God, something's wrong with my truck. It just engages into third gear hard sometimes. Then sometimes it doesn't. Now, if, you, if you're driving, uh, if you're coming to a, a stop sign or a red light faster, you know, because I kind of like coast all my uh, red lights and stop signs if I can. But sometimes I come to a, a sharp uh, stop and it down, you know, downshifts into third gear, you know, fourth to third to second or to first. It's not. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't hit it hard. It's actually smoother coming as you're, com you know, coming to a stop faster than if you're coasting. That was one of the reasons why I got rid of the F-250 previously to this because the overdrive coming from 6th to 5th, I guess the way I drive coming, you know, doing a lot of coasting, like off the highway ramps and stuff, it had a hard time disengaging from 6th to 5th, not unless I tap the brake and then it would come out of that gear. You know, it would like kind of shake and stutter the uh, whole truck trying to get from 6th to 5th. My hopes that I'd have the, uh, you know, one of the uh, the engine and transmissions that have been out for a long time. I figured, you know, it'd been a great combo for me to have for a longer period. And then I get, you know, I had problems with it. I get this new model year, but with having all these gadgets and, and options in this vehicle, I'm having no issues with this whatsoever. You know, it's got cloth interior. It's got cup holders here. I got my stuff in here. I keep some toilet paper in there for blowing my nose and, you know, what else you use toilet paper for. But it's got a nice deep uh, center console. And you got two more cup holders back here. But I normally keep this covered with a towel because, uh, you know, I get in the truck dirty a lot. So I'm trying to keep it nice because, as you know, I go through vehicles a lot. So I try to keep them nice. So with this 302A package, you get the uh, uh, power passenger seat as well. You have two glove boxes. Like I said, there's a lot of videos on this. We're not going to go into deep, deep detail about all the options on this truck completely that's you know for other people to do but i do want to show you how this truck looks on the inside and what the 302a package gives you we're gonna do a quick little walk around and you see i got some additional uh, leds on the front of this this does come with led reflector headlights and high beams and you know fog lights it also has the uh signature 
running light so it's a big C that comes all the way around that's part of that 302 a package you can see the sport package gives you the uh, colored you know the colored vehicle colored bumpers and it comes with a black fascia it's got cameras in the front I got cameras in the mirror so it does come with the 360 uh, lighting uh, sorry 360 lighting and 360 cameras but I got a camera in the front camera in each mirror I have a camera up on my third brake light and I have a camera here so I got a total of what one two three four five cameras and the 360 cameras on this works works really well and you can turn those cameras on while you're driving especially when you're towing a vehicle I'm just kind of covering that up so it doesn't irritate you uh, but that gives you a little light when you're backing up and also helping the camera see see but when you're driving this vehicle that is one option i guess i could say i do like is having the cameras and that's just for towing you know i'm able to turn on the front camera while i'm towing uh any of the uh, back cameras the bed camera itself which you really can't see with the tonneau cover on what's in your bed but i turn on that rear camera you know while i'm towing a trailer i turn on that back camera not a lot but if i i want to keep an eye on the actual uh the you know the cargo of my trailer you can turn this camera on and it will stay on uh which is nice because then you can kind of keep a you know you know check longer term your load on the trailer or check the trailer itself but you can make sure your chains are hooked on if you say oh did i you know hook on the chains you can make sure your uh trailer is plugged in which you usually can tell when it's plugged into the truck with this uh, this particular option because it actually tells you that you're connected to the trailer and you know you're connected but you can you know check things see for the most part i keep this thing as clean as i possibly can i got some inexpensive smart liners from amazon this time instead of going the uh weather tech uh route and I actually uh like it it's been pretty good they're, they're not bad you know they're probably about i think they're almost a hundred dollars cheaper than the, over a full package they're uh, actually pretty good uh they get they get the job done but i try to keep this thing pretty clean all the time you know i flip the seat up a lot you can see i keep some hats and stuff down here and some paper towel but it, right now because the way i'm set up for kayak bass fishing until my future change of how i'm bringing it out i actually load this up with like my uh some of my kayak accessories go inside here so i use this flip up seat a lot and it's a flat floor you don't get that i don't think in any other vehicle to be honest with you i mean there might be some out there now that are a little bit more flatter but i think most of them have humps but this flat floor in the four uh actually works out very well you can actually stick a you know nice uh a nice tv standing up in here too you flip up both seats and it, you know it's it's a nice option uh but you know for the most part minus this i mean this is a nice interior but it's still pretty basic but i think it's a lot nicer looking than a lot of the other interiors of the other brands out there you know they're all coming a long way this has a lot of options but it's not as sophisticated i think as like the ram with the 16 inch vertical screen with all the buttons on the screen this still gives you the knobs and everything to get to your quick stuff you want to get to in a hurry or you don't have to go through the touch screen to operate it you know that's my opinion i like simplicity this is like i said it's still nice but it's still simple enough to get to everything in a hurry so you know my main second reason or my really biggest reason to get this particular model uh you know that was on the lot was because because of the EcoBoost. A lot of other people my age are big B, big V8 fans. I have no problems with the V8, but trust me when I tell you this, I've had mm, 12 big block, small block V8s. Nothing compares to the EcoBoost. You know, as soon as you throw turbos or even the turbo on anything, it makes such a big improvement. The response time of the EcoBoost over the 5.0. Now listen, I when I was picking this truck up, there was a white one there with 20 inch rim, rims the FX4 package and all that other stuff that I kind of like a little bit more it had the 5.0 in it. I took that for a test drive, being this is the new uh, the new uh, model year. I took that 5.0 for a test drive, and I took this uh, EcoBoost, which is the newer version of it, where it's 400 horsepower, 500 pounds of torque from the previous gen. I took these both for a test drive, and the EcoBoost it just blows it out of the water, and I didn't even lay into it. Just the response time on the throttle, even with the turbo. You know the turbos really don't kick into this thing right away but even the response time on just doing normal city driving was night and day so you know people who haven't been in an ecoboost my first ecoboost was in 2019 on another f-150 and that was the previous version which was what 375 and probably like four whatever horse uh pounds pound feet of torque and that thing was fast this thing here is unbelievable and that's not even going to the wheels i don't know what the torque is to the wheels uh on these numbers but 
this thing is unbelievable you can see some this is all my all my relays and wiring for my additional lights but uh you know all i do to this engine and 30,000 miles has been oil changes air filter have changed twice i you know that they recommend i think every 30,000. i change my air filter every 15. i change the cabin air filter every 15. they recommend that i think every 20. and i change the oil at the dealership using just the uh, motorcraft oil every 5,000. you don't have to run synthetic in these things you know now that you're gonna keep this thing long term i'm sure full synthetic oil oil makes a difference but i just use the motorcraft in this from the dealership i changed the air filters myself i barely have rotate in the tires these are the original tires came with the what were they the wrangler territory ats they're not bad tires he's got you know the thirty thousand miles on them i think i've rotated them once and uh they've been holding out great now if i keep this thing i'm going to try to hold it hold out and buying putting tires on this vehicle just because i'm probably gonna get rid of it and it's not because i dislike it i just like having the bigger vehicle the new 2023 F350, either with a new 6.8 or the 7.3, I'm probably gonna go with a 7.3, and I want an eight foot bed. Uh, not just because of my kayak, I just want an eight foot bed because this five and a half foot bed is great, but I still, to me, these are grocery getters. Uh, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's a very small bed. But anyway, I've had no problems whatsoever with this engine. I may just be one of the lucky ones because, you know, with a new model year, you always get a lot of, uh, a lot of issues, but the, EcoBoost has better of a track record than the 5.0. You know, I think the EcoBoost has been out since 2011. Just keep improving it. And you know, they got high, higher output ones for the Raptor. So this little V6 can take a lot of abuse, obviously, and you can get a lot of power out of this thing. So if you're hesitant about an EcoBoost over, over the V8, don't be. Now you may have issues with the other parts of the truck, but as far as these engines, these things are becoming very, very reliable. This is my honest, honest opinion i was expecting to have more issues with this truck not mechanically i was have, expecting to have more electrical issues and i may have just been the lucky one you know i may just have you know they, they're constantly they do updates uh software updates over the air on these vehicles uh and i think they keep them updated now that they can actually change your transmission on these vehicles over the air with the updates it's it's insane what they can do now so that's one option but even with the smaller screens now they can do over the air updates but you know overall i've had no problems with this vehicle and i've been very happy with it i just have very particular things that i like and that's why i change so much or if i get a new vehicle and i'm having little issues with it i will just trade it in you know that's when the market was better where i could you know keep it for six months trade it in for another one and barely lose any money because i have the equity in the truck through all my trade-ins now now it's a little different you know the economy's a little bit different the interest rates are a little bit different this truck is very 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 comfortable i'm going to say that again very comfortable it is a enjoyable enjoyable ride my truck is a little bit stiffer because i do have other videos out there but i do i have added the sumo springs to this truck so and that's the reason because i tow a lot and i haul a lot i don't over tow with this vehicle 11,280 pounds is the most i've towed with this but it's short distance you're talking you know either 40 or 80 mile round trip i will not i would never tow that amount of weight with a truck that weighs 5,000 pounds just because of your handling this truck is so light having that kind of weight around there you do get pushed around by the trailer but i have no sumo springs uh has makes a big difference i usually put sumo springs on all my vehicles even my f-250 I had sumo springs on because i constantly had weight in the back so i wanted that no sag better handling this truck is capable of towing 13,300 pounds as it sits it's got the 370 uh 355 i think rear end in this but with the with the engine uh it's able to tow and the option is able to tow the uh 13.3 i think it's it may be the 355 yeah it's a 355 electronic locking and that's more than enough i just wouldn't do it long distance or all the time because i think that's a lot of weight and a lot of abuse but this engine towing that amount of weight the 11,000 pounds it's crazy how it gets the how it gets the truck and the trailer moving and being it's a v6 and it's very refined it's so quiet in the cab I mean, this thing goes up to maybe like 4,000 R 4, RPMs plus when I really want to get that trailer moving. And it doesn't sound like it's struggling. It doesn't sound like it's screaming like a V8 does. You know, so it's a lot quieter. It's working, but it's a lot quieter. And it gets the trailer moving 
better. That kind of weight, even with my F250 with the 6.2 gas, this gets that, tr you know, cause this has more torque and more horsepower than the other thing. And this is lighter of a truck. It gets that trailer moving a lot better than the F250, but your F250 is gonna handle that weight and your stability and your your confidence and when you're towing is a lot better with the f-250 so, like i said overall tires have been holding out with thirty thousand miles i probably have i could probably get fifty thousand miles all these tires uh I'm, i may push it to fifty thousand and not put new tires on here if i trade it in i'm going to do a separate video like i said of my uh options i put on here but as far as everything else mechanically and electronically everything's been working all i can say is with this painted bumper you probably can't see it because i wasn't wasn't able to clean the truck but with the painted bumpers, you get a lot of little rock chip uh, dings out of it. Uh, you know, so if you're very anal about your vehicle, like I am, that bothers me a bit, but it's not horrible. Uh, I'm sure there's, you know, in the past, I've done, uh, actually taken my painted bumpers up front and actually done Rhino Liner on them. This usually says, real quick, this usually says Sport 4x4. I didn't like the way it looked. I actually just put my own 4x4 badge on there and you can see I have some vinyl on there for my channel. But I'm gonna do a separate video on how I have it set up and what I've had on it previously. But as far as the review guys, I've had no problems with this vehicle. I may just be one of the lucky ones because I think all the quality today on most of the vehicles are not that great. This has been great so far. The lights are very bright. Uh, with this package, I definitely like LED. I don't know why the, the, why the uh, manufacturers just don't do LED. They're not expensive anymore. I don't know why they gotta charge you five or six or seven thousand dollars to get one package to just get LED lights when they could put them on and get rid of the stupid halogens. But uh, that's a whole nother subject. But you know, I've had no problems with this vehicle. I like it. It's just not exactly what I want. You know, it's more of a want than a need. I can do almost, almost everything I wanna do with this truck even with the short bed, with that engine and the capabilities of what I need to tow. But if you tow a lot, you tow heavy a lot, do not try to get away with having more comfort and all the options with a half ton. If you tow heavy all the time, please just go up to the, the, the three quarter of the one ton market. I know it's not of a nice of a ride. That's what you need to use when you're towing heavy. Now, if you just drive this truck and barely tow, great vehicle. If you tow like I tow, it's been a great vehicle. I just want a bigger bed. And unfortunately, the only way to get a bigger bed with four doors is you have to go three quarter or one ton, unfortunately. You can get a plus cab with an eight foot bed with an F-150, but I need a crew cab. It's been a great truck. Uh, the Velocity Blue actually has uh, grown on me a bit. So it kind of goes good with the uh, with the lettering on the vehicle with the, the, uh, you know, the, the red and the white. So you get your red, white, and blue for, you know, for USA. It kind of, that thing, that color scheme kind of goes good together anyway. You know, I will say, out of all the other brands I've owned, you know, uh, GM, the Rams, and now having Fords, I've had more Fords than the other brands as far as vehicles. Uh, I'm not a brand loyalist. I go after what I want, and a lot of times that's power and certain options, and the um, the Sync 3, I think, is in this one, or the Sync 4, wherever that big screen is. All the Syncs, I've never had any problem with connecting my phone, uh, just the navigation working. So I really like the Ford setup more than the others. You know, this this vehicle, this uh, engine blows the 5.3 uh, engine out of the water from uh, Chevy and GM. I think I think it still beats the 6.2 and the 1500 from GM by a little bit as far as like, you know, speed or like quarter mile run. But the 6.2 and the half ton from GM is pretty powerful, but you gotta run premium gas in that. You ha you can get away with, you know, you don't have to run anything premium in this truck. They do suggest, I think when you're doing heavy towing to uh, run uh, super premium in, in this uh, engine when towing heavy. I've never done it. I've always just ran regular gas in this and it has plenty enough power. I don't need any extra oomph out of the uh, premium uh, gas. But you have to run premium in the 6.2. Now I know a lot of people don't, but they actually say in the book that they recommend you running premium. So when they say recommend, they usually want you to do that, but I'm sure a lot of people don't. Uh, you know, Ford makes their EcoBoost and all their engines run on regular gas. I'm not as sure about the high output uh, EcoBoost because that's out of my price range, uh, but I, I'm sure you could probably get away with regular gas in that. And then the 5.7 five, seven Hemi with their transmission combo, this thing, pff, 
I've had that. This thing blows this thing out of the water if you're looking for speed. You know, I'm past that whole speed things, but there's time. There's times when you want to just go, and this thing blows a lot of other engines and vehicles out of the water just being stock. I mean, you could tune this truck and make it super, super crazy and still be reliable. Uh, best for all those young kids these days. But, uh, you know, I'm very happy with this truck. Now, as far as trucks, they are all overpriced, but they know they have us by you, the you-know-what. Uh, so they can get away with charging these astronomical prices. I think what I pay, I said for this, like a little bit like 55, whatever for this F-150, that is way too much money for this truck. It's, it's a great truck. It does what I need it to do and it's powerful, but $55,000 used to get you the King Ranch diesel. I know there's, you know, I know everything has to inflate every year and prices of things go up. But $55,000 for an F-150? I mean, come on. And they're getting up to like 85, 90? Really? I mean, there's people's houses that cost $100,000 or less for their mortgage. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. So that's why I'm holding on to this truck for a little bit right now. And the next vehicle, I'm probably going to order to get it exactly the way I want it and uh, keep it long term. So I'm hoping the 7.3 gas or even the new 6.8, wherever way I go, uh, it's all going to depend on the price. The way I go is going to be reliable. Now the 6.8 new one from Ford, it's a new engine. So it may be a little iffy. That 7.3 now has been out, what, three years now? So, and it's been it's been having a good track record as far as I know. Uh, I'm going to start deep diving in a little bit more on the research on that, but I haven't heard anything negative. Uh, it's just an old school, I think, push rod V8. So it's made to be reliable for the commercial world. So I definitely want to get a vehicle that I exactly want uh, in my price range and keep it at least for five years. My wife will be so happy if I keep a truck for five years. Uh, so that's my goal next time around. You know, I'll be honest with you, if I if things don't change after five years and there's no reason for me to get a new truck, I will probably run that F-350 if that's the route I go uh, into the, not into the ground, but probably at least a good eight years uh, before I go next time. Cause I guarantee in eight years, what a truck's gonna cost $150,000 for a gas. You know, I would go diesel if the emissions were not so problematic and it's not the engines it's all the emission stuff now i heard the lz zero little half ton that, who knows that may be a sliver of an option on the next vehicle uh their whole regen system is not really a regen and it's supposed to be even reliable so that may be an option you know maybe the chevy 1500 trail boss you know with the diesel engine is the only engine i'll get from gm or chevy or wherever you want to say uh, i'm not a big fan of the 5.3 and i'm not running premium in the 6.2 so uh, that LZ Zero engine, that little mini uh, Duramax, may be possibly, possibly an option, but I would still probably order it because I still want the at least six and a half foot bed. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep you guys updated as I go. I'm going to keep adding this kind of content to this channel. I think it's important to have some uh, different things on your channel instead of just being the same thing over and over again. And like I said, this, you know, the vehicles, the equipment that gets you to the water is a part of our everyday life. So I think having honest reviews uh, from people who've owned the vehicle not just getting paid to do it or having it for one week having a true honest long-term review i think really helps people people's buying options and their take on something uh like i said i want to do another review a review on this one before i get rid of it you know maybe between now and 50 or 60 thousand miles by the time i get rid of it uh i may have some major issues so it may change the what, what you know my opinion on it or you know other people's opinion on it but we'll we'll keep you updated on all of our equipment trucks trailers as we go through so that's about it guys i'm hoping i was able to keep this to a one-part video uh you know i've never experienced the 2.7 ecoboost that's probably a great fuel economy engine for people who just drive trucks and occasionally tow light and put some stuff in their bed but this ecoboost over the 5.0 liter not sure you're a big diehard v8 fan blows the 5.0 out of the water it even blows the six the old 6.2 ford out of the, out of the water because they're getting rid of that uh this ecoboost like i said has been getting a better track record than the 5.0 lately so if you guys have any questions about this you know the engines have stayed the same from 2021 going into 2023 as far as the 3.5 liter ecoboost most the high output versions have stayed the same so you know ford's always 
Ford always wants to stay on top of the market. That's just their thing. But for them to keep this engine at the 400 horsepower and the 500 uh, foot-pound uh, torque output, to keep it that long now, going into another year, I'm actually glad they have because it, it, it's more than enough power. It's way more than enough power that I need. That power, when it comes into hand, uh, comes useful is when you're towing or if you want to beat somebody off that red light, which I try not to do anymore as I get older. But, I mean, this thing has enough power, more than enough power, that they don't need to change it. I'm sure next year they'll probably keep the same engine and they'll probably make it 450 horsepower and 600 pounds of torque. And then they'll probably have a high outer, you know, a different turbo for the high output. But I'm glad they're keeping the 2023 the same for people buying another F-150 going into this year with the same rating and torque and all that stuff. So it's going to be reliable, uh, you know. Every brand, every engine, every model of a truck has issues. That's just how it is. I mean, the quality we know today is not like it was back when it was simple in the 1970s and 80s when things were just steel, big V8s, and carburetors. I and mean, you're not going to have that simplicity anymore, unfortunately. But I'm glad that, you know, this is, like I said, this is my second 3.5 liter EcoBoost. I had the 19. I've had no problems with the EcoBoost, the 3.5 EcoBoost, since I've had the two. Two and a half years now, experience with having the EcoBoost would have no problems with two different uh, uh, trucks between the 19 and this. I will update you before I get rid of it and see if there's anything that has changed. But as always, guys, uh, I'll catch you guys on the water. And thanks for watching. And like I said, if you guys haven't been to this channel before, this is more, you know, this is a kayak bass fishing channel, but we are going to be covering the vehicles, the equipment and the trucks and everything else that I use to go fishing. So it helps break up the channel a bit, break up that content and get more subscribers also into the, uh, into the RJM family. And I appreciate every one of you. Catch you guys again.